Now that we are, of course, officially in 2022, the countdown to Gran Turismo 7 is that much more real and that much more palpable on the 4th of March. So what I wanted to do, as you can tell from the packaging of this video, is to take a moment to pay our respects, in a sense, and of course the title and thumb make it a little bit more extreme than it actually is, because that's YouTube, and that's the way you have to be these days, unfortunately, to look back over GT Sport and actually be more positive about the game. Because those of you who have followed the channel for a number of years especially will know that my thoughts on GT Sport have been by far the most mixed of any Gran Turismo game. I've been playing the series since the second installment when I was about six or seven years old, if that, and it was, as I said, a mixed bag for me. I would often criticize aspects of the game or decisions made by Polyphony, but there were also more than a few occasions possibly even more occasions where I said positive things about the game, but people don't tend to take as much notice of those. So what I wanted to do, as kind of a send-off to GT Sport, which many of us, myself included, probably aren't really playing that much anymore anyway, and I know some are, the eSports side definitely, and for some of you it's probably the first Gran Turismo experience you had in fact, but for those of us who maybe weren't as happy, as well as everyone else, I wanted to take a moment, look back over the experience, and find, even if it's just one thing that you thought the game did well, which you may even hope is carried over into GT7, of course that's the inference here, but also just in general, something which, completely in a vacuum, you enjoyed about the game, a decision that they made, a choice that was made about the development or the packaging or the content of the game, which you actually did like. And of course those who still love the game, will find that much, much easier. Now for me, I've got four things in particular, and they're kind of like a two-in-one package deals because they tend to have multiple facets. And I'm gonna run through the four things which I enjoyed the most about the game, for everything from the way it feels, to the way it looks, to the way it was packaged, to the approach it takes to a Gran Turismo experience, and of course, slap your thoughts down below as well. As kind of our final send-off in a very general sense, because of course GT Sport isn't dying, it's just not going to be anywhere near as high on the agenda for many of us, myself included, as it was at this point a couple of years ago. The first one for me is a fairly obvious one, and it's one which I think most of us can probably agree on, especially when it first came out, and that is the graphics. I do love the look of the game. There are always things in racing games that you can criticise, you know, the, the audience or the background graphics are an easy target to pick on, but the cars themselves, which is what we're really there for, and even the majority of the circuits, and when later things such as weather, like rain, were added, even that as well, they genuinely do look fantastic. Of course, now that we've moved beyond it, it's easy to look back and think, well, was it really as good? Well, yes, it really was at the time. I still think that GT Sport looks great. Many of the cars, especially the super premiums, if you will, still look fantastic. I fully expect that many of those models will be carried over with updates into GT7. That was kind of the point of many of them. And the photo mode scape locations alone show just how incredibly realistic the game can be. It's fairly easy, in fact, to fool an unwitting person into thinking that the cars in those photos actually are real, and I've seen more than a few occasions over the past few years where various sites have not been aware of what Gran Turismo Sport is, and have used a picture from the game as if it were a real car. And it's always funny when you see that little Gran Turismo watermark in the corner of a photo. So that's number one for me, and I know that for many of you, you probably share that sentiment. The second one for me is kind of a two-parter put together, and that is both the approach which the game takes to physics, generally speaking, combined with something which doesn't immediately seem like an obvious tie-in, but it actually is, and it's partially due to the physics and partially due to the overall packaging of the game, and that is the seriousness which this game has. Now, there is a drawback to that, and that is the loss, unfortunately for many of us, of a more traditional Gran Turismo experience. And that's not about just physics, that's about everything. Career mode, the importance placed on esports over everything else, etc, etc, and that's an entire discussion which we've had many times. I'm talking more so in, in terms of how the game can finally be taken seriously enough to 
actually be at this point an Olympic sport, which Gran Turismo now officially is. That would simply not have happened with an older Gran Turismo game. So that, I think, just as a just as almost a, a gift, if you will, to Kaz. I feel great for him. I'm really happy for him. I know how happy that would have made him feel as a creator of things myself. When they do well, when they get recognition, it's always a great feeling. So I know how great he must have felt when that news was announced to him, or when he was first in talks about that. I love the fact that the game has reached a point where it is taken seriously not just by us who love these games anyway, but the true testament to a game being brilliant is when it goes outside of that sphere. When somebody who's maybe not even a gamer at all recognises the game's ability to be realistic enough to be taken seriously as its own sport. And when it comes to something like racing, well, it's not the same as like having some kind of shooting game in the Olympics. Because you can much more accurately and, you know pick apart, at a fine level, how it compares to real life. The look, the sound, the performance, and for the game to have been taken seriously enough to reach that level, I think that's very impressive. The physics are not my favourite of the Gran Turismo series, GT5 actually has my favourite handling, but overall I do like the physics in this game as well. It definitely of course has a more realistic approach, and that actually lends and leans into the third point. My third thing which I really like about the game, this one could have definitely been improved, but I do like the trajectory of it. With that being said, funnily enough, they're actually taking a bit of a backstep on this with GT7, but I'm also definitely not disappointed about that, and that is that I like the fact that the game had a very clear focus on realism when it came to circuits. So a lot of real tracks, much more of a focus on real tracks, and... Making tracks which are technically not real seem as real as they could be, whereas in the older games, there were certain circuits which just weren't realistic. Even as recently as GT6, something like the Cape Ring, that's a borderline Hot Wheels or Scale X trick track. It had a full-on loop and a huge jump which would destroy any race car's bottom half when it lands. It just wasn't a realistic circuit. In the past of the franchise, we've had other crazy circuits like that as well, some more extreme than others. Complex String was one of my favourites, of course, which, as far as circuits go, isn't too crazy. It's essentially a test course, but you know what I'm talking about. In GT Sport, there was much more of a focus on making these biomes, if you will, feel real, even if they're technically not. Now, the back step that I mentioned is that in GT7, technically, they've been shown a lot of fictional circuits, the caveat to that is, of course, they're circuits which we've really wanted back, like Deep Forest, Trial Mountain, potentially others like maybe a Grand Valley, maybe a, you know, Apricot Hill or a High Speed Ring. For me personally, I would love to see some of the city circuits return, you know, real location with a fictionalised track like Seattle or New York. We don't know that, so I'm not saying that is going to be in the game, but I love that approach to making a circuit. Now, that has been controversial for some people. I know that some of you, as I mentioned in a recent video rounding out 2021, one of the most controversial, in fact, I believe the most controversial trailer or bit of information that we've seen about GT7 so far was actually the Lamborghini cockpit cam on uh, Deep Forest. Because people don't like, some people don't like the way it looks. And it does look odd. It looks stretched. Again, for those who are new to Gran Turismo, maybe started with GT Sport, you probably wouldn't even care. But for those of us who, you know, played it from years and years ago, it is a bit jarring. I'm not saying I love the trajectory, but I understand what they're going for. I like the fact that they are trying to make it grounded and realistic. Because at a certain point, you know, as much as we want games to still feel like the 2000s, that's just not the way it is anymore. One of the reasons why I wanted to develop my own racing game is because I want to make a game that essentially no one else really is right now, which is that 2000s experience, back when games like TDU, Midnight Club, Need for Speed Underground, Gran Turismo 4, Forza Motorsport 2, when these were the top games. Honestly, I do miss that era, but that's beside the point. The fourth thing for me is actually the updates, and this is going to be another controversial one, but I think those of you who have followed the channel will certainly know that I've been very critical many times about how 
steeply and drastically the updates and addition of vehicles dropped off in GT Sport. And at this point, it was literally years ago (laughs) that that dropped off. So it wasn't just a case of its end of life thing. But initially, for I believe at least the first year, and then it started petering out sometime after that, I don't recall exactly when, the updates, the expansions, if you will, from adding an actual career mode to adding, of course, the new vehicles, the new circuits like Laguna Seca, it's probably the best update rollout of any game I've ever played, because these things are massive DLC opportunities, which they offered completely free in addition to the game. Now, many of us, again myself included at times, have said, well, sure it's free, because the game wasn't big enough or complete enough at release. I'm not going back on those thoughts, because I still agree with them. However, The fact that they didn't seize that opportunity, you know, EA style, to try and milk every last penny out of something which should have already been in the game, I think is admirable. It was almost like they recognised, okay, we get why you don't like this, let's try and improve it for everyone. I have a lot of respect for that, and I really appreciate it. It meant that the game went from being being essentially just an eSport endeavour to still being an eSports game, say, 70-80%, but also adding to what was not there from day one for those of us who were disappointed in not having the traditional Gran Turismo experience. So for me, those are the four things which I think really stood out to me about my time and my experience playing GT Sport. The fact that the updates petered out, of course, was expected, but that initial rollout was very impressive. I mean, even adding my favourite racetrack in the world, Le Mans, or La Sarte, as it's technically called, Yeah, I I enjoyed many of those updates, and many of the cars were and are going to be carried over to the new game, many iconic vehicles, and many new faces as well. So, like I said, those are the four things which I just wanted to take a moment to reminisce on, but I'd love to hear yours. Do you agree with mine? Would you maybe uh, delete one of those that I said from your personal pick? Would you add extras to it? You could be negative about the game if you want. You know, I had moments of referencing that in this video, but overall... I'd like to keep this as positive of a takeaway as we can. This is almost like a a mini tribute video to take our, in effect, last look over the shoulder, or what will for many of us be the last look over the shoulder, as we move into what appears to be, and what many of us certainly hope to be, myself included, a more grounded, traditional, but benefiting from the updates which GT Sport afforded it, Gran Turismo experience with GT7. So of course stick around on the channel for obviously Gran Turismo 7 content, and Gran Turismo 7 alone, let alone any other game or any other content of any kind, will have a big say in how the channel does this year. So of course my hopes for it are very high as well. Ultimately, slap your thoughts down below, and of course stick around on the channel for more, and until next time I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.